Marketers. Welcome to today's video. Uh, make sure you visit podcastformarketers.com for more information. Over there, I have a really kick-ass course on how you can make at least a few grand a month on simple reoccurring revenue, right? And that's called Freedom Funnels. And make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel, man. I'm put out videos every day. So you don't wanna miss what I put up because I put out some pretty um, kick-ass content. And man, I always want you guys to comment below, man. I love, absolutely love all the comments you guys bring. Let me know what you're thinking. If you have any questions, I'm always in the comment section. I really love the community. Let's get into the video. So what's up, Michael, man? Uh, I'm glad we finally got connected, bro. We've been kind of going back and forth with each other's comments on each other's right. channels, you know? Yeah, right, man. Thanks for having me, finally. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool, man. Um, so the reason why I kind of hooked up with you is because, um, like, obviously I'm a YouTube dude, and I don't know anything about YouTube. And when mm -hmm. I watch your videos, I'm like, this dude does, like, know what he's talking about. He ranks number one for videos over and over and over again. So I'm like, yeah. man, I gotta, I gotta humble myself and finally just ask this dude, you know, <laughs> hey, man, yeah. can, you know? <laughs> so, um, and then, um, we used his tool and we'll talk about that in a minute, but, and, and the shit worked and, um, you guys know that I don't like to recommend anything that doesn't fucking work. So, um, yeah. I asked Michael, Hey man, could you rank a, a keyword for me? So, um, the video that I did called get out of thin air, uh, money uh, pull it out of thin air was which was about uh, getting money from nowhere anywhere just just pulling money out of the internet mm -hmm. um for google analytics and uh amazon aws we ranked number four and i'll um, put a four, screen, yeah. screenshot up of that right now um show you where we ranked number four so basically it just kind of took over now for me dude with with amazon with uh youtube seo it's kind of like a it's almost like a leprechaun, dude. I didn't think it really existed. So um, can you tell me a little bit about like how YouTube SEO works for a normal person that just wants to kind of get online and start messing around? Right, sure. I mean, with YouTube SEO, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's different than the normal uh, Google SEO and stuff. It's, it's less complicated. There's no such thing really as like uh, posting tons of backlinks, private blog networks, all kinds of shit. You know, that doesn't exist for, for uh, YouTube SEO. So when we talk about trying to get a video up on on YouTube for a specific keyword, uh, we first have to talk about. Um, the competition of this keyword, right? So there's a bunch of keywords out there that are really, really easy to rank. But what we specialize in is actually ranking your videos very high for super highly competitive keywords. Like for example, a few weeks ago, I ranked the video for uh, how to make money online, which is really competitive. You know? Right, that's like a and, beast. Right. And it's like basically when you really break it down, very easy to understand. It's basically two parts, right? It's the on-page part, uh, which is basically the title, description, and tags, and it's it's the uh, promotion part where you uh, get high retention, video views, and likes, and all kinds of stuff, right? So. The on-page part, though, is like 85 to 90 percent of the whole equation, right? It's like, uh, and the description is the most important thing. So what you want to make sure is, like, you need ex exactly uh, three to four times the keyword that you want to rank for in the description. But what a lot of people don't know is that you you shouldn't just post the keywords in there, but you should actually find out by reverse engineering the YouTube algorithm and analyzing your competition the exact match phrases that you need in order to outrank your competition. And that's why we developed the software so it actually gives gives you this information that you can use in order to rank. Right, so now let me ask you this. It, now, I agree with you 100% on the whole like YouTube is not as complicated as Google yet. It will be right. though, they will do it sooner right. or later. Um, but um, what about all this other shit like having um, people that um, made put you in their playlist and your watch times and all the, like all of this other shit that we have to work. Okay. With. Okay. So the watch time, which means like the retention, like the percentage of 
how long people actually watch your video is really, really important. That's something that's that's true and that's really important. Like people should at least watch 50 to like 75% of your video so you get real good rankings, you know? Because YouTube sees that and it really knows because people watch your video for a specific amount of time. So the algorithm, YouTube's algorithm knows that your video provides massive value. Uh, when it comes to all this other, this, these smaller things, like when people say, oh, you should put it in the playlist here and there. I mean, sometimes it has some effect, but it's not really that important, like these smaller things, you know? Well, like uh, I was adding, like, so I had a ritual, right? So I would, mm -hmm. um, you know, do my little descriptions like you're talking about. And I would put the, the actual, like, headline of my uh, YouTube video inside of my description. And then I would write up a, a short description that used that headline several times. Like at the end, I would be like, if you're more if you're interested in more in this, whatever my title is, send me a, a link in the comments or whatever. Um, I would do all of that. And then they's like, well, go do your, you know, put it in a playlist and then make sure that you, and it's like, fuck man, people don't want to watch a playlist that's a hundred videos long, number one. But right. so now I have to create a playlist and then it's like, okay, make sure that you use uh, the, the what do you call it the cc where it's got the subtitle exactly yeah shit. yeah mm. i'm like fuck that sure is a lot of shit but they're saying like i guess and then doing the title and then you gave me some game you were like D dude put put the name of the title in your thumbnail so like oh shit yeah in your thumbnail in your uh video file name that's where you have to put yeah, it yeah yeah so i was doing the video file name so whenever i save my video i come out with my headline right then right or my title yeah. Um, and then, but the, the thumbnail is like, oh shit, I never thought about that, right? So yeah, um, yeah, that gives yeah. These two things too. are very, very important. Yeah, but with the whole CC, like the subtitles and stuff, a lot of people say subtitles are important, but uh, through our testing and stuff, we found out it's not even that effective. It. I haven't seen it any different. Um, I remember seeing you doing some testing about going live as well, because yeah, you exactly. Going live for like hours at a time. Did that make a difference as well, or that was kind of bullshit too? Uh, it, it kind of depends. The thing with live streaming is like, let's say you already have a channel that has a lot of subscribers and stuff. If you go live and if you put your keyword in the title and you go live for like two hours and you get massive amounts of views, uh, because you already have tons of people watching it, then it, you could actually rank it. Okay. But just, just using some random account or something, it won't work. Right, right. So, cause I went live a few times, but I did it out of necessity. Yeah. I was on because it's. What we did a few weeks ago, uh, that was kind of funny. We just used a normal channel that, that had like five subscribers or something. Mm. And we went live uh, for like three days. Uh, yeah. we, we put it we put it on a vir on a virtual server. So uh, okay. and, and that that didn't rank. I mean, sometimes it actually ranked a little bit here and there, but it always dropped out. It, it doesn't rank, you know, well, this shit didn't rank for me. But like I said, I went out of necessity. I went for cause I was on vacation. I just went live because I didn't want to like record a video that night. Right, right. Man, I didn't get any fucking rankings. But, I mean, you know, I did have people. <laughs> it was cool that I had people engaged, though. They came like, hey, what's up, yeah. Sonny? You know, so. All right, so when, when we use, when I use your software, the shit did work. Um, I don't know exactly how it works, but let's talk about these um, high retention views. Now, a lot of people think that that's like, first of all, I asked, like, did that fucking work? So <laughs> buying, buying uh, page views and likes does work um, for rankings. Yes, it does. It does. But a lot of people frown on that. So, like, what's the deal with that? Yeah, so the deal basically is you got to make sure that the views that, you, that you're that you getting are actually high retention views. Because there's a lot of people out there, like on Fiverr or SEO clerks and stuff, they sell you just bot views. Like, they just have a software that randomly, like, uh, opens your, your video through different IP addresses, but it just opens it and watches the video for like two seconds, but that doesn't do shit, you know? So you need actual high retention views. So for example, with our software, we have a feature where all the users that are in that software that are registered actually watch each other's videos and they are forced to watch it for a specific amount of time. Like for example, if the video is five minutes long, they're forced to watch it for like two and a half minutes. So we get a 50% retention, you know? I see, I see. So and they so get the one they thing get I, points for that, and then they can redeem them for views for, and stuff, for their so. own views, right? So it's like yeah, a view, yeah, yeah. it's like a view for a view almost. Um, yeah. I, I've been noticing that a lot of people are doing that with promoting content, so I wouldn't see why this would be any different. Um, there's a lot mm -hmm. of groups, a lot of groups that say, "Hey, man, come like my Medium post or come like my Facebook post." Or exactly. Whatever. So a group with people liking YouTube videos seems like the smart thing to do. So that's that's another bonus about your software, right? Right, so, right, exactly. Um, 
Now, without your software, let's talk about that for a minute because I always like to bring like real value. So right. um, let's let's take the best practices without using your software to still get on YouTube and because I did it without without your software, but I didn't mm-hmm. do it good, I didn't do mm-hmm. it good though. But <laughs> I just <laughs> I just slammed the shit out of Ty Lopez when I came on and it worked. Yeah, right. That's how I found you exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but tell me about the best practices for YouTube. Uh, I think if you if you really want to get started with on a low budget and without spending money or something, I think the first very, most important thing that you have to do is you have to do the uh, the correct research on what you actually want to put out there. Like you got to make sure, like for example, you did it with like Ty Lopez and stuff. You got to make sure that you find something that a lot of people are searching for at yeah. this very moment. That's like exactly. the easiest thing to do, right? And then you just simply, I mean, you just simply go to like the the YouTube search bar, start typing in something that has to do with it and, and look what people are searching for right mm. and then based on that you create the video the content and then you do this whole uh title description and tax thing manually uh, i mean without using the software i mean the results will not be as good but you can still try to rank your video and stuff okay and once you've done that, once you've uploaded the video, you tr- you just try to share it in as many, uh, I don't know, Facebook groups as possible. Try to shoot it to as many people as you can on Twitter and stuff. If you already have like an Instagram, put it in your Instagram story on your profile and whatnot. And um, that's it for the promotion part basically. And also what you can do is like, you can go to related YouTube channels and start engaging in the comments, you know, in the comment section, because a lot of people are hanging out in the YouTube comment section. So if you go to a related video and then say, oh, I got this and that right here, check out my video, uh, you will for sure get a few views, you know, so. You know, I never ask people to watch my videos, right? I always just put honest feedback on a video. So Yeah, you don't have to be that aggressive. That's right. Yeah, you can just go there and they will check it out. Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, it's like I came to your video and gave honest feedback on a video that you posted about posting a video a day. Um, And I was like, no, dude, I post a video a day, but, you know, I'm going to keep going, whether it's malarkey or not or whatever I said. And um, a couple of your viewers came over and watched my videos and was like, "Okay, you know, this is pretty cool. Thanks, Sonny, for the information. Um, And it wasn't like I was trying to snag your viewers. But the thing about it is, is that somebody that subscribes to you will subscribe to a million people. You don't know where they're Mm -hmm. subscribing from. But if I if you I feel like if you um, provide honest value, like just you know come look at my channel you have to do that people are nosy they're just going to click on your shit anyway exactly exactly <laughs> so yeah that, that's what i noticed so all right so let's talk about um video sniper pro and uh what it can do right so as i said basically the software was created like its core function is simply like to get your videos ranked right it has tons of different functions like for example it has a rank tracker uh, so you can keep track of your rankings for your videos to stay up to date and maybe do some fixes here and there if the ranking drops um, but as i said it's basically built to reverse engineer the youtube algorithm analyze your competition and based on that give you the information to make your videos rank. And it also has a keyword research tool so you can find out what exactly people are searching for and what are the most profitable keywords in your niche. So that's basically the whole software in a nutshell, you know? Right, and like I asked you before, does the shit really work? Of course it does. (laughs) As you can see with my own YouTube channel and stuff, it does work. (laughs) You know, there's a lot of shit out there like, um, and we'll, we'll, We'll we'll talk to that, talk about that for a second. Like TubeBuddy and that VidIQ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's what's the difference between you and those guys? Right. So a lot of people ask me, especially like on YouTube and like the comment section and stuff. So what's the difference between TubeBuddy and, and Video Sniper Pro? Right. So the thing is, uh, TubeBuddy is basically a tool or a browser extension. Uh, that people can use more as an analytics kind of tool, right? So you can see other like tags, what tags to use and and all kinds of stuff, but it's not it's not it's not going to make you rank because there's a few reasons for it. So first of all, it doesn't do this whole reverse engineering thing, and the second thing is it also doesn't get you any views or any any promo or stuff. It's basically, I mean, it's a good tool if you just want to analyze things and you want to learn more about your competition or whatever, but it's not actually going to do the job for you, you know? No, and you're absolutely right, because I use that vidIQ thing, and I didn't see shit. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any difference between views (laughs) or view retention. What I did notice was when I start using thumbnails with people in them, 
um, and bigger keywords in the thumbnails that worked for video views. Um, right, right. My headlines changing that worked for video views. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. putting fifty thousand keywords inside the keyword thing didn't even fucking work. And come to find yeah, out, yeah, exactly. They only YouTube only really reads the first ten. So exactly. All, yeah. all of those other keywords doesn't matter. Don't, they don't matter. So right. um, vid IQ, I found like I felt like it was just fluff. Like you know, yeah, you can get yeah, you know, it's you can get analytics, and you can kind of like maybe get some recommended videos with someone else, but it wasn't really a proactive tool to actually help. Yeah. It's around. not result. It's not results based. It's just like right. an analytics tool that you can use and you can do whatever with the information, you know, that's yeah. like, yeah. yeah, that's what I noticed as well. So, um, can my subscribers get a little discount or a code or something from anything for a tryout? Can I get something? Yeah, so the thing is, we actually had this thing where we offered like a free version and stuff, but it got really abused by a lot of people. So they went out there and created like five or 10 fake accounts per person and stuff. Right. So we changed it a little bit, but I got a discount, uh, a discount coupon, 50% off for the first month uh, of using the software. Nice. Yeah, I can give you the code. I think it's called VSP Sale. Like you just put it on the, in the checkout page and stuff and uh, you can put it in your description of the video so they will find it. All right. That's cool, man. We appreciate that, man. Um, sure. any, any any other kind of tips that we can get from you so we can ball out like you on Instagram or something, man? You got 100,000 followers on Instagram, man. How'd you do yeah, that? 100 and 110,000 or something. So basically, I mean, when it comes to all of the social media stuff. Uh, I mean, a lot of people now come from YouTube and all of this stuff, like my viral videos. Like, for example, I got a video on how to make money on Instagram and how to get more followers. And it's ranked like in the first position. So I get tons of people every day just coming from these videos uh, who follow me and stuff, even if I don't even tell them to follow me, but they just do it. Uh, but on Instagram and, and Twitter and whatnot, it's always like when you're just starting out, it's all about engaging. So we have a method called follow for follow. So you want to follow people in your niche, right? And if you follow 100 people, 30 or 50 of them follow back, right? So that's basically how you build up an account. A lot of famous people actually also use this method. Uh, and then at some point they blew up, you know, but it's, it's a nice, easy way uh, to get started on there. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm a dick. I follow and unfollow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on Instagram you have to do this because because you have a seven thousand five hundred follow limit. So at some point it will stop. So you have to unfollow again. You know. Yeah, yeah. So I unfollow. Uh, you know, I don't keep my. I keep to my little follow unfollow ratio, right? So I just right. hit ten thousand. My goal for this year was ten thousand um, followers, and I ha I just hit ten thousand like two or three days ago. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but all right, man. Hey, I appreciate your time, and um, let's do this again, man. Sure, no problem. Awesome. Thank Take you. Care, man. Coffee break. <sighs> <laughs>